Hey guys, uh, this is the fourth video from our lessons on data representation. Uh, and we're going to continue these lessons. We're talking about check digits, sound, and compression. They're, these are some of the main things that always come up on the exam paper, so they will be useful for you to know about. Uh, so, starting off, so some of the keywords you'll need to be aware of are analog, bit depth, bit rate, sample rate, and compression. So they're worth noting down in your book because when you have a nine mark question, you need to show that you are technically aware of what you're talking about. And these five keywords, five keywords will help you with that. So we're gonna be learning about how we can apply compression to sound. And we're gonna talk a little bit about what's better uh, in comparison to going digital. Because uh, there's a big misconception here, and you need to make sure that you talk about things in the correct approach. Uh, I will explain this in more detail in a moment. Now, what I want you to think about is if somebody said to you, what is the best quality sound that you would get from a, a file? What would you think of? Have a think about that, because you've got record, which is are uh, all otherwise known as vinyl and I've got some here just to demonstrate so here is a record all right so that's what you uh, may or refer to us old people as as uh, something back in the day well actually there's a reason why that is coming back now and I'll talk a little bit about that in more detail in a moment but then the other thing that you've got is good old CD. Now CD, I will just show you an example of that. So here's some from earlier. So CDs are what you would have saw as these. Now many of you don't use these as much anymore. So you've gone on to mp3s and you're using these mp3 players and you're using your ipods of one thing or another but actually you don't actually think a lot into which is the best quality well actually record is the best quality out of all of these now the reason for that is because records are in the original analog sound and it's read with the needle that goes around that disc whereas cd and mp3 are a compression of the original analog sound which means actually more often than not that sound is actually taken away from the original sound that you hear, the original song. Uh, and I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about what that is in a moment. So here is our analog sound. So what, if you, well, in your science lessons, you will know that analog is like your, your original sound and it fluctuates, it changes, it goes up and down. But what happens in order to convert your analog sound into a digital format. The computer needs to sample it at key points. So there will be a sample taken at this point, and then this point, and then this point. But what you need to remember is that there are intervals. These intervals in the middle, notice that nothing is happening there. So that sound is getting missed out when it's being compressed into an MP3 or a CD format. And you need to bear that in mind. Now, I want you to think about it. The more samples you have, so if I add some more samples here, okay, that means that my file size is going to increase because I've got more samples. That's more key points of the music and it's going to be closer to the analog sound. That is the type of thing you will need to make sure you acknowledge in your exam paper, particularly if it's a nine mark question. So this is a analog sound wave, okay? It's approximate, but it's not smooth. And you can see here, again, at key points where it's been converted into a digital format. So we're moving on now. So what you need to know, key things that you will need to know for your exam paper is what sample rate is. Sample rate is the number of times it's sampled. Remember, I drew for you this wave, okay? love my drawing and I and sample rate is the number of times that it has been sampled okay the more samples you have the higher quality the sound but don't just talk about higher quality talk about file size okay file size is important and it's usually in all the past papers something they have given you marks for acknowledging 
Now, sample rate is shown in kilohertz, which is the number is a thousand of samples per second. And just so you're aware, CD quality, CD samples are usually about 44 kilohertz and MP3 is actually a lot less. And um, you'll see that in a moment. So I want you to think about in one of our last slides, we talked about color depth. So if the color depth, the number of bits used in, in each sample or each pixel, okay, was higher, it meant more colors could be represented. Well, it's similar when we're talking about sound. You need to know what bit rate is. Now, bit rate is the number of sam samples taken, so the thousands of samples, multiplied by the bit depth. OK, remember what color depth was, the number of bits used per pixel. Well, this is the number of bits used per sample. So if I use if I'm using eight bits per sample, OK, I'm going to multiply eight by the sample rate. But think about it. If I decide that I'm going to have a bigger file and I'm going to use 16 bits, then I'm going to have an even bigger file size. These are the type of things that you need to be able to comment on in your exam. So just so you've got a, a rough idea, when you work out the bit rate, MP3 is usually around 128 kilobits when you multiply the sample rate by the bit depth. So that's your bit rate. CD is usually 1411.2. You don't need to know specifics, but you do need to acknowledge that there's a big difference in the quality there. Now, MP3, which is this one here, you can see you could fit a lot more on a CD if you burnt it, okay? Whereas CD quality, okay, you're going to fit about between 15 and 20 tracks on a CD, whereas MP3, you could probably get a good, good 100 depending on the quality. So in order, again, thinking about how we worked out the file size of images before, you're going to need to think about what happens if we have channels as well. Because sometimes with sounds, you may have multiple channels. I want you to think about surround sound, sounds that are happening all at different points, okay? They will have their own channels. So what you're going to need to be aware of there is you might have your bit, your bit depth, okay, and your number of samples, but the more channels you have, so if you've got different things happening, think about it when you have one sound in one ear and one in the other, stereo, okay? If you are gonna have different things happening at different points, you're going to need to multiply that by the number of channels available. Now, that will be number of samples per second, but you'll need to work out that is how many bits per second. You're going to need to know how big the file is. So if it's 60 seconds, you're going to multiply that by 60. And then to get it into bytes, you're going to need to divide it by eight. Remember, there are eight bits in a byte. Moving forward from that, you will need to divide it by 1 million again if you want it into megabytes. So that's roughly how you estimate a sound file. Now, we need to be aware of different compression types now. There are different compression types, and one of the ones that we tend to use often is lossy compression. Lossy compression works by removing some of the data that is unnoticeable to the human senses. So, for example, we've just talked about sampling sound. Well, it's removes data out of that that sound file but we don't always hear it because of what our hearing's like okay and the same works with images lossy removes bits of the image and it's not always noticeable to the human eye now key things that you'll need to know here is what compression is and you just need to acknowledge that compression is basically the reduction of the f file size using different algorithms okay so to look at this image from a distance, you might not be able to notice the difference between the quality. It's not as noticeable. Look closer at the lossy image and you can see it starts to pixelate and get a bit squarey. And that's because it's removed key information and it's tried to join certain pixels together. Whereas lossless doesn't remove any of the data. It's a compression algorithm that keeps all the key information in place. Lossy tends to be used for images and sound, whereas lossless tends to be used for computer programs or text documents where you can actually move the words around. So just a quick rundown, all right? So with lossless, we sometimes can't afford to lose any of the key information. That's why we go for it. That's why we use computer programs generally 
or email. And that's because we don't want anything that's going to stop our program from working. All right. Now, some of the files that you need to be aware of, some of the compression types, and this has been in most of the old spec. All right. So you need to be aware of this. JPEG is an image. OK. GIF or GIF is also an image type. PDF we tend to use for business documents. MPEG moving pictures it's basically a movie and then you have mp3 which is a sound a lot of people tend to get mpeg and mp3 mixed up in their question papers and you need to be careful with that now check digits are used to to check our data imagine you received a a letter from me and it was all jumbled up you'd think something's not right here all right what we can do is we can use a check digit to make sure that that information has come through accurately and that's generally used in things like barcodes so this item here is our check digit and, and it's basically an algorithm to check that the information has been transferred correctly now there are different versions of this but ean8 is the example shown on the right which uses seven digits plus your check digit on the end that check digit is basically used uh, to make sure that the algorithm is correct. And I'm going to show you a bit how that works in a moment. So you start with your first digit on the left. So you've, we've got our barcode here. You start by multiplying the one by three, the two by one, the three by three, the four by one, the five by three, the six by one, and the seven by three. Then you add them all together and then subtract the next highest multiple of 10 to check the digit. So I'm gonna show you the example on the next slide so it makes a bit more sense. So what I've got here is my barcode, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and my check digit on the end. I've multiplied by three, then by one, by three, then by one, by three, then by one, and by three. And that's given me these numbers below. Then I've added them all together, which gets me 60. Now, the next highest multiple of 10 would actually be 60 because it's the closest item. So 60 minus 60 is zero. So if I was to check this on a computer, my check digit is zero, and that therefore means that that information has come through correctly. So that's what you need to know about EAN 8. Now, the other thing you need to be aware of is something called parity checking. Now, we also use this to check that the information has come through correctly. So what I might do is send a, a piece of information in binary. So what we've got over here is an example. So I've got seven bits used and it could be an ASCII letter. All right. And the number of ones used is zero. Now, if I want to send it in even parity, I might do it as a zero, okay? Because that's saying that the number of ones come through must be even. Well, to make that even, I would put a zero on the end. To make it odd, I would put a one on the end because that would then make that odd parity. Now, as a programmer, you would say the information being sent is being sent as odd or even because then when the person receives the information, if they have said it's come through at even parity, and for some reason the number of ones and zeros are odd, then you can send for the information again. So I'm going to explain that in a bit more detail on this next slide here. So say for example, the computer transmits seven binary digits such as one, 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 zero, zero, one, one, using even parity, okay? Now, the parity bit on the end should really be a one okay so count the number of ones we've got and we've got five all right so that's currently odd but we're going to put a one on the end of it and that now makes it perfect even parity now if the next person receives that information and they're looking for even parity and they get five through one two three four five all right then the system would then request the information again because it's not even it's come it's come through somebody sent me the information 
with an odd number of ones when I requested it with an even number of ones. So that would tell me that there's something wrong with the data. But bear in mind, it doesn't always make it completely accurate because I could still have even parity and maybe two of the, the, the bits have been corrupted and it comes through looking like it's correct. So it's not foolproof. So be aware of that in case you are asked of the drawbacks of using odd and even parity. It's not completely 100% foolproof. So that has been talking about error checking and it's been talking to you a little bit about how you can use uh, check digits and how you need to be aware of sample rate. All of this you need to take into consideration. It comes up on almost every exam paper going. So make sure you recap on this, make sure you understand the impact of the number of samples taken on the file size, make sure you understand the number of bits used and make sure you understand why we use lossy for converting into MP3. Remember there are lossless compression types for music such as FLAC and you need to be able to actually talk about how if you use MP3 it's going to actually give you a smaller file size but more of the information is going to be missing. So I hope that's been really useful to you and I hope it's a good revision tool for when you come up to your exam period. Thank you for watching and if you want to go back to the actual re re revision that we've done before you can go into your folders. Uh, if you are not one of my students um, and you want some of these worksheets to help your students out in, in your school, uh, just let me know and I can send some of these worksheets um, when I have time. Uh, but thank you for watching.